an Irishman who brought his dead uncle's body to a post office in an attempt to claim his pension has been pictured carrying his coffin at his funeral. Declan Honey, 40, was one of the pallbearers at the Church of the Holy Family in Carlow, Ireland, on a Monday as 66-year-old battered oil was laid to rest. The funeral was held three days after Honey and friend Gareth Coakley fled from a post office in the same town after turning up with Peter's body carried between them, claiming they did not realize he had died. Connie sported a black eye during the funeral service, revealing he is beaten up by locals accusing him of being a murderer. Advertisement He denies the charge, and post-mortem examinations have revealed no scenes of foul play on Mr. Doyle's body. Honey, speaking to the Irish Daily Mail, said he has been interviewed by Guardi who are continuing their investigations but have yet to press charges. As far as he is concerned, he has been cleared and says he is confident that no charges will be brought. He is also sticking to his story that he did not know Mr. Doyle was dead when he brought his body into the post office. Petter was so frail and only weighed about six or seven stone so whenever he went out I would have to hold him up, he said. Looking back at what happened, I think he died at the bridge because his legs suddenly went limp, but myself and Gareth had no idea he passed away because this has happened a number of times before. Honey says he is now being targeted by locals, and has been advised by family to lay low until anger has dissipated, but he refuses, saying he has nothing to hide. I'm being roared at on the streets by people shouting murderer at me, he said. I've also been jumped by local scumbags who beat me up because of what they've read. My auntie has advised that I keep a low profile, but I told her I won't because I'm not a murderer. Hold my head up and walk up and down Carlo all day long. People can talk all they want, but at the end of the day I've been clean from heroin for nearly three years and have served my time in prison. Honey and his friend had arrived at the post office on Friday afternoon looking to claim Mr. Doyle's pension, but were refused because he was not with them. A short time later, the pair are said to have come back carrying Mr. Doyle's body between them with a jumper pulled up over his face and a hat on his head. Concerned workers are said to have asked whether Mr. Doyle was okay, at which point the men are believed to have placed his body on the floor and claimed he was having a heart attack. Police now believe Mr. Doyle may have died up to three hours before the incident took place. Honey and Cookley are then said to have fled the scene, though Honey denies this and says he left to contact relatives before returning. He said he has not seen his friend since the incident, 
guessing that he is in hiding for fear of reprisal attacks. Petter helped to raise me, we were like brothers, Honey added. You would want to be one bad BD to drag your uncle out of bed when he had already died. Hopefully when people read my side of the story and see how I have the support of my family they'll start to see things differently. At his funeral on Monday, Mr. Doyle was remembered as a talented decorator and dedicated family man who made time to support those closest to him. Charmaine Dowling, Mr. Doyle's niece, told the church how he had treated all his nephews and nieces like his own children. She said, you ran to him if you wanted to cry. And soon you would be dancing around the kitchen table. She recalled that he would take her feed his racing pigeons and would hum songs from Barry Como and Dean Martin while he would sing lullabies like Gilbert O'Sullivan's Claire, the singer being his favorite artist. Miss Dowling recalled her uncle Petter working as a caretaker, a waiter and as a talented painter who would often quote Shakespeare. She referred to Petter's love of travel which had included road trips in the U.S. On the death of his own father, he had minded his mother Annie with unrivaled affection. He was a quiet man, dignified in public but in private he was a hero who would not seek recognition for caring for his family, which was most important to him. Ms. Dowling stated, his greatness was not known to many people but, was, to his family and closest friends. She concluded her tribute by saying that Petter's family will carry his memory with them with pride.